This conference will now be recorded. All right, Sri, thank you very much for finding the time to join us. My, my pleasure. Um, thank you for having me. So we have a few uh, slides ahead of us here on how the world has changed forever. Uh, if okay, uh, let's just get this started and then we can do some Q&A afterwards. Sure, absolutely. Uh, hello, everyone, and uh, thank you for having me. I'm 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 uh, honored to be part of this very famous, very uh, uh, successful organization's uh, outreach efforts. Uh, I've heard so much from our friend Neil Stimler, who has been praising Yuyanis for many years, and uh, uh, who helped make this connection. So I'm grateful to uh, for that. I also uh, see lots of people who are in the in the room and uh, I know some of them and I hope to uh, meet all of you. I'm sorry we're not together, but this is sort of the ground realities of today. I also hope this is the first of many opportunities for us to connect and share and also to learn together. And so we call this, you know, the world has changed forever and how are you gonna change? We are hoping that the world has changed forever. Uh, there are parts of it that will change and have changed how do we fit in? What do we do is something that I've been thinking about. Uh, greetings from New York City on the upper west side of Manhattan. I'm on lockdown here for day number 57. 57 straight days we've been locked down in Manhattan. And uh, just to give you a sense of uh, how, uh, how unusual that is for me, I uh, two years ago I was on the road 210 days or so. Uh, so to be at home every single day we calculated in our home, we have two 17-year-old children, twins, and my wife and I and our dog, that excluding the dog's meals, as a family, we were eating about 24 meals a day at home together. Now we're eating 84 meals a day every week. Uh, sorry, 84 meals a week together. I'm sorry, we were eating about 25 meals a week together, and now we're eating 84 meals a week together. And in the 50, only on the 50th day, did we go out and order takeout? Uh, I have to go and pick it up, but every single day we have cooked at home. Uh, and thankfully, my wife is a fabulous cook. My kids uh, have learned to cook. My son is a food blogger. So as a result of that, uh, we're all eating together and things that we wish for in the past, like having time together. Well, we certainly got a lot of time together. And the other thing that also I'm reflecting on is that uh, I've not stepped in a car or Uber or taxi in uh, 55 plus days, which tells you again uh, what has changed. So uh, you can see on the screen my my email address, my Twitter, my Instagram, Facebook, etc. I hope you will use this as a chance to connect with me. Uh, my LinkedIn also you see on the screen. I'm a big fan of LinkedIn, and I think it is not used properly by almost anybody, including me. And uh, I teach workshops on LinkedIn and why they're important. So um, uh, I, I want all of us to get better at LinkedIn. You also uh, uh, see, you can sign up for my newsletter. And uh, also I have all my best tips on a single page of social media because that's where my focus is. You can find that. And also you can uh, 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 subscribe to my YouTube channel, which I will talk about a little bit and put it in context to what we're talking about. Uh, on the screen, you see my uh, QR code, and you all know how to use QR codes, but Americans don't use QR codes for the most part, just the way Americans don't use WhatsApp for the most part. In fact, somebody recently did a story, what's the matter with Americans and WhatsApp? And uh, I will, uh, I know I think the headline was even better than that. It's like, what's up with Americans not using WhatsApp? And uh, uh, all of that is to say that when I was at the Met, I was the chief digital officer of the Metropolitan Museum, a life highlight in every single way, uh, something that changed my life forever. And I used to uh, be asked on a regular basis, why don't you have QR codes next to every painting, every label, why don't you put a QR code? And I would say, I hate QR codes, being an American. I hate them because I heard the term robot vomit. And that's really what this reminds me of because it doesn't say anything. But that changed two year, three years ago in, uh, in October 2017 when Apple built into their phone the camera, the QR code reader. And uh, even today, when except in European and Asian audiences, when I show them that feature, their minds are blown because they've never seen it before for the most part. And that tells you something, that the greatest marketing machine of all time 
didn't market properly this amazing feature. And that tells us as business folks, nonprofits, leaders in our communities, that doing great work is no longer enough. You have to get it out there. You have to talk about it. You have to tell people about it. Otherwise, people won't know. So you, of course, know how to use your QR code. So I hope you will be able to grab the slides here and also uh, the slide uh, URL, bit.ly slash three change. One of the things I tell people is that you want to be a great annotator of content, annotation or making notes and explaining uh, to yourself and if needed to other people. Translating is a great skill to have and I recommend for today. We're going to throw a lot of ideas, terms, uh, things at you, concepts. So if you can take up a notebook and just kind of make quick notes about things you want to try now, things you want to try later. I want everybody to have a Bitly account, a free Bitly account so you can track, uh, not just create these nice URLs, these short URLs, but you can also track the traffic to everything you do. And uh, that's something that uh, I encourage you to think about as you're doing. I also wanted to invite everybody to my closed Facebook group called Sri's Advanced Social, Sri's Advanced Social. So if you go on Facebook and you just type in Sri's Advanced, it'll come up. And it is a group of now almost 10,000 people who have taken workshops like this with me and uh, and senior people at Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, the CEO of Foursquare, the editors and chiefs of major publications around the world. Uh, they're all there and it's a great community, not because of me, but because of everybody there. And the noise to signal ratio is terrific and uh, it's really well, well put together. And that's again, not because of me and I want everybody to think about how you curate your digital community along with your physical community. And that's how Giannis is able to pull us all together so fast, even though the Brooklyn event didn't happen. And when you look at this photograph I'm, I'm showing you here, uh, you'll see uh, there are some very famous people in here and some very influential people in here and people you've never heard of who are more influential than you might think. Uh, I see a New Yorker cartoonist. I see the head of newsletters for Nat Geo. But right behind me, you can see me uh, on the, uh, you can see me right here. Right behind me is this gentleman. Does anyone near here know who that is? Maybe in the chat you can put it. I'm not reading the chat because I'm on full screen presentation, but does anyone know who this person is right behind me? You may know this person. This is Ali Velshi, famous CNN and now MSNBC journalist, but anybody know who that is? One of the most famous people in the world. His name is on uh, something that everybody has used and they know his name from that. Giannis, do you know who that is? I know it's hard to uh, see. On the uh, chat, Hillary Marsh suggested Greg Newmark. That's correct. Craig Newmark from Craigslist. That's correct. And there he is. Well and, done, Hillary from Chicago. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and most people will not be able to pull him up. You know, if he uh, came up to them and uh, uh, slapped them across their face, they wouldn't know who he is. Uh, but he's one of the nicest people I know. And he, there he is in this crowd and just right there. Like, this is why I love showing this photograph is that you never know who's around you, who's near you. What, what they are contributing to the world, what they're doing. And we are very quick to make judgments uh, about people. And I love that uh, we're not, we don't have to do that. Whenever I teach, I start with ABC, always be charging your phone. And I'm carrying around multiple chargers. And even now, uh, having your laptop charged all the time, I've been on multiple meetings where people have had to log back on because their computers died. I always say, always be connecting. Connect with people when you don't need them so that they're there when you need them and that building that network of yours is very, very important. And then finally, always be collecting. It's about the importance of collecting uh, screenshots or photographs. I've given you my slides, you know, giving you 20 slides is like giving you 200 slides. You'll never look at them again. But if you take a screenshot of something you like, or you take a phone call, I mean, you take a phone uh, camera uh, uh, picture, then you will remember them. You'll look at it in your, you know, when you're, uh, you have some downtime. And by the way, a, a valid skill to learn right now is how to take screenshots properly. And uh, there are multiple ways, as you know, to take screenshots. All of us are good at taking kind of the entire page, but are you good at taking just very precise uh, screenshots of very specific things on the screen uh, is, is a skill that all of us should develop uh, and something you can work on during this downtime. Are you able to do just the A and just post that if needed? Are you able to do that? Very simple skill that you can you can think about. And finally, always be learning. And here you are all in a very busy day for you, but Giannis has brought us together and you have 
chosen to come in and learn as I am learning on every single one of these sessions that I do. Uh, it's been very, very meaningful to me to do that. So I wanted to show you, we're not going to do a Slido of you and get your word cloud of your, your thoughts today, but I just wanted to show you how the world has changed. We all can give a thousand examples, but uh, four weeks ago I was supposed to give the opening keynote at the start of an MBA program, a three-continent MBA program. And you can imagine several of you have MBAs, or if you've been to graduate school, you're often going back after having been in the professional world for several years, and then you go to university to get your MBA, and a program called Three Continent MBA. Is that amazing? And you would be super excited, but look at the words that people gave on that first day, opening day of their of of their um, MBA program. Uh, think back to your own MBA or any school that you went to. These were not the words. I mean, you might have been confused a little bit, but you were excited, you were motivated, you weren't exhausted on day one at the opening keynote, you were jazzed, right? Like those are the words we used. And now we're seeing, you know, people are feeling sloppy, indecisive, uh, quarantined, indifferent, sleepy, lazy, bored, not on the first day of an MBA program. And that kind of captures part of the problem we're feeling here. And Giannis, you'll keep an eye in the chat if there's any comments, pushback, corrections, errors, uh, all of that, uh, you'll bring that in we'll as do. we go forward. Uh, we'll I do. also want to take a minute to salute John Byrne Murdoch, at J. Byrne Murdoch on Twitter, who has done this incredible job with his Financial Times uh, 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 spreadsheets, uh, not spreadsheets, visualizations of data, which is one of the things that we now appreciate more than ever. There have been questions raised about some of the ways in which this data is shared, but we'll put that aside for now. And what I'm showing you is a way to look at leadership today. And uh, ignore the China line for now because of the questions around how, how accurate the information is, but they are opening up right now in China. My wife, who works for Samsung's subsidiary called Harman, they make the Harman Kardon and JBL line of products. We hear them talking about what's happening in China and how it's changing. And they're a South Korean company, so you can see the blue line is South Korea. But I want you to focus on a couple of lines here. So look at Australia, the blue line, the dark blue line. Australia was in the middle of its worst disaster in its history already with the fires. And you may remember even as recently as January for the Australian Open tennis tournament, uh, the fires were affecting them. And look how they have managed their crisis. Uh, look at India, which is rising, you can see in green. But the fact that you have to even look for India on any uh, on any map that has anything to do with uh, health outcomes. Um, India doesn't have enough testing. India has all these problems. My, my parents live there. But the attitude and uh, impression of where India is with, with this uh, virus are, are quite fascinating uh, to see. But look at, I want you to look at the Korea numbers. South Korea and the United States got their uh, first confirmed case on the same day, on the same day. And look at where America has ended up and look where South Korea has ended up. And this has to be, the blame for this has to be put squarely on leadership, on how, at, in, Amer in America's case, at the very top of the leadership uh, chain, where we had a, a leader who was blaming, uh, obf obfuscating, lying, deflecting, uh, playing down the virus, and what role that has then had to do. This will be, you know, history will judge not just the president, but Fox News and people like that and their role in this. You know, when uh, when the crisis started, I was talking to people in Italy uh, really concerned because Italy was the basket case in this case. And we were saying, oh, my God, it's so sad what's happening in Italy. Uh, terrible, terrible situation. And then we didn't realize we were the basket case. And New York City, uh, which likes to consider itself the greatest city in the world. Uh, lots of people in other great cities, including Paris and others are here with us, would dispute that. Uh, we've proven that we're now the epicenter of the epicenter. And the kind of uh, crisis that some of this is an own goal. Some of this is not, obviously. But these are uh, terrible moments for uh, America and for New York and what comes out of this is going to be very interesting to talk about. In all my work, this is, I believe, the most important slide I ever show people, and that is that the scarcest resource of the 21st century is human attention. And our work as 
in any of the fields that we're in is all about how do we cut through and get people's attention and how do we connect uh, with people. I have a, I have a client uh, who was among the most traveled people I know. It's very hard to get his attention uh, when we wanted something, we want to show him, present, etc. Now he has all the time in the world. So now we are we have much more of his attention maybe than we even wanted. And so that's just an example of how uh, how things are changing and what we have to do. So if you take a photo of nothing else, if you note nothing else in my presentation, this comment by the former publisher of the Wall Street Journal, I think captures this idea of the world that we live in before and also where we're going. And when I was young, I wanted to be a millionaire. I did become a millionaire, as you can see, but not in dollars. Uh, but in unread Gmail messages. And Giannis, you can look at the screen here. What would you say is the more tragic number even than the million unread messages? <laughs> I see the drafts folder yeah. as well. Yeah, so when you so think about drafts, having a thousand drafts, right? Those could be messages, uh, opportunities, uh, chances to do something exciting or just go to drinks with friends, all of that. So I'm not showing you this to say I'm important in any way at all. I'm just showing you to say that we have to think about uh, this in the work we do. We talked about Apple building in a QR code reader and then not telling anybody about it. Uh, we could have a great newsletter. How do we get people to open it? We have a great well, art exhibition. How do we work on that? Those are the kinds of things that I'm obsessed with and that I'm thinking about all the time as we do this. Now, Janus, so your in, point is uh, not to hold drafts, not to uh, <laughs> wait for things to be polished. Is that your message? <laughs> No, yeah, don't don't wait for things to be polished, and uh, that that would be one of the messages. But also, clearly, there are other ways to communicate with people now. You know, your your WhatsApps mm -hmm. and your texting and uh, Twitter DM is an incredible way to connect with people because those are less crowded channels. I'm a big believer in email, and email still makes the world go round. In a TikTok world, email still matters. Is one of the things that I uh, still tell people, and we're here because of email, not because of other, you know, we're not all here because Giannis did a TikTok dance, though I would like to see it and as, as the only invitation that he does and uh, would be interesting. So uh, in, the invitation, the uh, in the invitation, we were, uh, you know, Giannis was kind uh, to say nice things, but uh, I really uh, uh, saw what life does and what happens with life. I was at the Met. I ran a 70 person team working on the future of culture. Uh, it was an incredible experience for me. I loved every minute there. Uh, we hit the ball out of the park in every single metric uh, that we had, uh, you know, that line KPI or key performance indicators. I was raising on top of that millions of dollars. It wasn't even my job. Uh, we were so thrilled to that we were growing our global uh, uh, platforms and increasing footfall and foot traffic into the museum. And we were just, you know, it, it, with all modesty that I can muster for this moment, I can say that we did everything asked of us, not me, but our team, and we did an incredible job, and I lost my job. And uh, what that tells you is that this was an organization that was having financial difficulties and running uh, a deficit. And so they took uh, the ch first chief digital officer, the first chief marketing officer, and the first chief design officer. We all were asked to leave the same day. And it was really problematic. And we've done, uh, the CMO and I, Cynthia Round and I, have done some uh, really wonderful uh, public conversations around what we have learned uh, working. Uh, uh, and uh, I still love the Met and everything it means to me uh, hasn't changed, even though I was negatively affected by it. So I went on Facebook. I told people I lost my job. I told them, tell me what to do next. I gave people a Google form to fill in, and 1,400 people around the world filled in that form and gave me some good ideas and some terrible, awful ideas. But it was the worst moment of my life turned into the best moment of my life. I was so, so happy uh, to get that connection. And so part of what I say to people is that build your connections now when you don't need them so that they're there when you need them. The PBS NewsHour came and did a eight-minute story, followed me from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. as I looked for work. And everything on the screen and everything in my presentation is clickable. So you can click and read any of these things if they're of interest to you or watch these. And I am so hurt to see uh, Three million more Americans lost their jobs this week, uh, putting us over 30 plus million people without work. 
I just want for our international friends to understand that this is a country where 40% of Americans before the crisis couldn't write a $400 airline ticket, couldn't buy a $400 airline ticket unplanned to go for a funeral uh, across the country, 40%. And uh, today, we now add 20 five percent unemployment and uh, 30 million unemployed just think about what this is going to do to this country and no matter how much the bounce back is or anything it won't be what the president says if you remember he said it'll open up beautifully it'll be a v it'll not be a v it won't even be a u it will not be a u it'll be i'm, I'm calling it a backwards j so it'll be like this and then it'll be down and then it'll, the, the that stem will not complete the way we want for years to come uh, this is nothing like 9-11. This is nothing like the 2008 recession, and it's very, very tragic. By the way, you see another QR code here. Remember, I was a guy who hated QR codes, but I, you see another QR code because of um, I, I did a 200-post Twitter thread on how to uh, deal with job loss and careers and job interviews and how to plan all of that, and that's been viewed more than a million times, and you can get that by going just right on there and grabbing that QR code. And again, we'll send you the presentation so you have it. Now, for the guy who hated QR codes, look at this. Uh, so we're gonna put Yanis on the spot again, and uh, we're gonna see if he can identify all of these QR codes. Remember, a guy who hated QR codes. So Yanis, you can start anywhere, and uh, we'll, we'll go, or, uh, or you can pick somebody else if you want them to go, if you don't wanna do it. I think I'm gonna have to pick on somebody else because I don't have an iPhone. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but uh, why don't we uh, pick on the Canadian? Is that okay, Tony? As many as you can get. No one can get all of them. So go ahead, I Tony. See Tony here, uh, who has a Brooklyn T-shirt from last year. So thank you, I Tony, for showing that. That's what I get. Yeah, I'm not a uh, not super well versed in these. I can't say <laughs> I can identify, you know, more than a couple of them. So go ahead. That's all right. Go ahead. Anyone is fine. Well, I'm going to go for the low-hanging fruit and identify WhatsApp and Venmo because they're literally labeled. <laughs> uh, and I'm, I think that I'm guessing the top left is LinkedIn. Um, Correct. But I, well done. Yes. That's branding for you. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I have to stop there because I'm about okay. TikTok. Let's TikTok you, and, you, yep, and you got TikTok. Well done. That's that's correct. Uh, by the way, I should tell you. And by the way, uh, you know, Giannis might call on someone else, but I want to say about TikTok. My kids begged me not to join TikTok. And they were so horrified when I did. And they said, uh, Dad, we don't want you to be another dad on TikTok. And I said, wait a minute, Will Smith is on TikTok and he's a dad. And they said, you're no Will Smith, Dad. And so uh, that was uh, an ego blow, which is what living with 17-year-old twins is like constantly being told you are not worthy of anything. Uh, let's see if anybody else wants to jump in. Who feels like they got this or they there's something here that they haven't, they know maybe that others don't? Anybody? Otherwise, let's move on. And you're right. So this is WhatsApp. This is LinkedIn. This is WeChat. Yeah, this is Instagram here. We'll come and uh, this is Messenger, which has, uh, as you know, uh, more than a billion users. This is Venmo, and all the way here is WeChat. And uh, that is a photo of the co-founder of Tencent, the parent company of WeChat. And uh, Daniel it, it insisted that I get a WeChat account. And uh, that's like you know being told by Steve Jobs that you have to try this Mac <laughs> MacBook, and uh, I uh, I created that account. And part of why I'm showing you all this, remember, I'm the guy who hated QR codes, is to say to all of you that this is where you heard a little bit Tony mention branding, but this is the way in which people are connecting, sharing. This is the full range of ways in which people can connect with me, and there's also. Uh, email in there and I threw when Venmo in there in case anybody wants to send me a few thousand bucks This is a good way to do it uh, But uh, more seriously if anybody does send me a couple of bucks as some people have in these sessions just for fun I give them all to the Girl Scouts of New York that are donating a hundred thousand boxes of cookies to their uh, to frontline hospital workers in New York so uh, that's why I, I show that, but I do not want your money, uh, of course. Uh, but again, just to think about this world of connections and how do we think about this? Uh, where has TikTok come out of nowhere and become so successful? Uh, Instagram was in 2012 what uh, TikTok is today in terms of where its growth potential is. And so as business leaders, as community connections, arts leaders, you have to think about these issues about 
Uh, where do we put our energy? Where do we put our money? Where do we put our attention in these tools? And uh, Giannis is going to keep a close eye on the time. We have a few minutes before we can take more questions. I also love my Bitmoji. Uh, this was the number one app in 2017 on the iPhone. And uh, uh, every, every uh, kind of uh, brand is trying to be relevant. And I did a conversation with Tanya Reese of Edelman, who said that uh, people do want to hear from brands, but they want solutions, not sales. Solutions, not sales. So I thought that was a very good way of thinking about this. I wanted to show you a really fun tool called Do Not Touch Your Face. And uh, what, what happens is it's AI that learns uh, when you're touching your face and it kind of yells at you. And you can see barely in the back, you can see that I was touching my face and it started yelling at me. So do not touch your face.com. And one of the things you will see when you go in there is the privacy questions. Well, are they tracking you? Are they viewing you? Well, all of this happens locally. You can turn off your internet and still learn how to use this. So these are the new ways in which we are trying to see uh, and understand all of this. And I tell everybody to say it after me, no one knows. No one knows what's going to happen. No one knows where we go from here. There is no playbook. Even the, the sainted Dr. Fauci doesn't know. Nobody knows. And uh, certainly, we all in business have to learn to adjust and try to make up our own playbook. I think um, in so many ways, there are going to be changes and uh, new bursts of creativity and opportunity that come out of this. Are we uh, able to rise to the moment? What are we able to do is something that's going to be uh, something that we can think about. I was asked to come up with some ways to think about social media and COVID-19. One of the things I realized is I don't need to impose my own ideas because there's been a terrific piece written all the way back in March by Taylor Loren. You can see her, uh, the bit.ly link and the link, you can clickable link here. Her Twitter handle is Tay L-R-N. Her Instagram is taylor.loren. And just pulling out one item from her list, provide organic value, focus on engagement instead of driving traffic, uh, be helpful, be useful to people. Those are things that uh, you can think about and you can read the, all her tips right there on that. The other thing I've been telling everybody is work on something. There's something in the world that you can that you haven't had time to do. Maybe it is cooking, maybe it is baking, writing a great novel, but also technology. There's a great time to work on something digital and learn uh, how to do it better. So I decided to work on three things, learning how to use Canva, which is a really good design product that many of you know. And I'm just going to go in um, and uh, uh, see if I can pull up here uh, my design screen. Um, sorry, I'm just going to go back in here and uh, share it. Um, so I'm going here into Canva, which uh, many of you know. And I want to show you my own evolution in Canva. So this is how I used to do my uh, announcement for uh, my show. I have now a global show. That's what the other thing I was going to work on. But look at how I used to do it. And now, with a lot of help from a lot of people, there's the same uh, intro card, and look at the difference, right? So this is where a non-designer's idea of how you communicate information, uh, and and then this is the way that what works on Twitter, on Facebook, on YouTube, this is what works. And so something that I think about every day is that we have to get better at design. And so I decided to work on learning how to use Canva. <clears throat> the other thing I wanted to work on was YouTube. And so I've built on YouTube slash Srenet, S-R-E-E-N-E-T. I hope you will join me there and subscribe. Um, I decided to put my energy into YouTube during this lockdown, even though I only had 200 followers there, uh, even though I have other channels, Twitter and others, where there's 10, 20, 30 times the number of followers, because I wanted to learn YouTube. And I learned several things about YouTube, including the fact that it's very hard to build YouTube. And I have enormous respect for YouTubers who have now thousands and millions of followers. YouTube is a different relationship that we have with YouTube than any other platform. And we can talk about that in the Q&A if you want to. But it's been fascinating to, to spend 50 days working on, on YouTube and getting better. And our show, which started with just eight people on a phone call, is now a global conversation. We've had guest speakers from 35 cities and nine countries. I hope some of you would like to come on the show. We talk about various aspects of life under 
COVID-19. And uh, what I've learned from this is that uh, I used to always preach that work on something and don't worry about the outcome. And if you're not able to do something for eight viewers and zero dollars, you will not be successful in even if you had all the viewers and all the dollars. So that's something to keep in mind. And so I was happy to do this, even though there was no money and there was no audience. But you believe in what you're doing and people will come and find you. And now I'm live every day on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. And we're able to do some amazing work. And this has resulted in uh, lots of paid opportunities for our work. We have, we're now making our shows for other, we're doing white label shows, we're doing virtual events. Uh, we've done more than 25 events already, and we have several more coming. We're doing a, a, uh, a conference for 50,000 teachers at the end of May, and we're doing all the back-end production for it and putting it together. None of this would be possible if I didn't start with eight viewers and zero dollars, right? So this shows you that the world is changing, there's more opportunities, and there are things that we can try and do together. When I was at the Met, I was asked, uh, what are the Met's rivals? Is it uh, 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 you know, uh, the Louvre, or is it uh, the Guggenheim? And I'd say, it's none of those. Our competition is Netflix, Candy Crush, and Life in 2020. And that's what's still the case in my mind. And things are only going to get more busy uh, uh, for people and how do they find that? So that's something uh, to think about. So I'm just, this is my last set of three, uh, last ideas, and then I'll pause to take questions. Uh, I just wanna leave you with this idea that in magazine covers, being clever is really important. Here are examples of two glorious covers, one from 1968 and the other from 2006. Both, one is the passion of Muhammad Ali and the other is the passion of Kanye West. Clever and smart and intelligent, all of that you are seeing there. Uh, and controversy, obviously, when you're putting uh, people like this and saying that, uh, you know, in the spirit of uh, a more famous person than even them. And today, in digital, clear is the new clever, is the idea I want to leave you with. I got that from John Huey, who used to run all of Time Incorporated and all the magazines. So let me pause there, Yanis, and let's go to some questions. All right. Thank you very much, first. That was really, really great. Thank you. I very much enjoyed it, and I hope so did everybody else. Uh, we do have some time for Q&A. Uh, you can ask by simply just going on mute. Uh, that normally works. And uh, you can also uh, just write on the chat. But uh, let's just pause a second, and then uh, let's get some questions without me picking on anybody. Uh-oh. This is like uh, law school. Hey, hey, Neil. Hey, Neil. So how what do you, you think are the good? Great to great to have you here. So what do you think are the biggest trends for how to generate revenue with content online? I mean, you're a master of connection and engagement when you're working with clients with your firm, Digi Mentors. How are you advising people to you know build their brands and build their portfolios for sustainability? Thank you. I hope everyone knows Neil Stimler, and I hope you were here, Neil, when I uh, sang your praises earlier. Uh, Neil is one of those people. So you should know everybody that I was a, a great lover of art, uh, but I they deliberately, the Met hired a chief digital officer who knew nothing about art, who had never worked in the art world, uh, so that we could think about how we connect the museum with the world in a different way. And uh, I see our friend Chris Gorman is also here, and Neil Stimler. They were just two of the people who took me, uh, you know, uh, especially Neil, Neil was in my department, and he kind of uh, took me under his wing and was my guide to help me understand the art world. And still today, he is my uh, uh, my my go-to person on everything from open access. And he pushed us, by the way. Uh, you may have seen press releases and news stories around the Met having 450,000 images given away and uh, available to everybody in the world for all kinds of cool stuff. All of that was because Neil, uh, I would say, cajoled, pushed, prodded, uh, uh, insisted, and moved an entire ocean liner of an organization that used to make millions of dollars from their images to think about how they can be more relevant in a digital world. So back to your question, Neil, uh, I would say uh, what I'm telling people is, uh, I, I've been inspired by Tanya of Edelman who said, you know, uh, we want solutions, not sales, that going to every one of our customers and saying, clients and saying, how can we help you? What do you need from us right now? And I'll give you a perfect example of that is Hong Kong, uh, University of Hong Kong is 
uh, one of my clients, we were working on social media. I know very small, but uh, with a very specific project with a statement of work and all of that and working long distance. As soon as they saw my show, they said, okay, we want that for us. We are now doing every week a global conversation around uh, COVID-19 and how Hong Kong is fighting that. And we had the gentleman who discovered the SARS uh, virus. We had a whole session just on how to use masks. And we had a session yesterday with the head of uh, uh, technology and learning, teaching and learning. All of that came from them seeing that we could help them in a different way, connect with the world, reach the world, teach the world. And that's what we're saying to all our clients. What can we do? And what I do on our shows are very different from Zoom calls. We're all going from one Zoom call to another Zoom call to another Zoom call. And what I tell people is that this is a different moment in our time. And we need the, the events we put together, we call them, we say they're not Zoom calls or go to meeting calls. They are shows and people want to see a show. They want to see television. They don't want to be in another meeting. And that's what we are building as an idea. This thing we're doing with 50,000 teachers, it's going to be a show. It's going to be a conference, but it's going to be a show where people connect and share. And uh, if any of you get a chance to go to my YouTube, Srinet, you can see we, we're, we're, we can be as broad uh, as you want or as narrow as you want. And all of this started because my social media weekend, as that Neil and Chris and others helped me with, was going to be canceled. Uh, we had 10 days notice that our partner uh, uh, on March 21st was going to cancel and tell us not to come. So I could have postponed, I could have canceled, but we decided to do an online conference instead. It, as luck would have it, we were, in fact, one of the first global conferences uh, that, that switched to online just by luck. And I ended up having uh, a more profitable conference. More people joined from around the world to participate, to speak, to share. So I say that uh, not to, uh, to boast in any way, but to say that I encourage people to take a chance and do, do new ways of connecting, try new things. And that's what I say to people, Neil. Thank you, Shri. It was great. Thanks. Great, yeah. All right, we still have time for one or two more. Suraj says, thank um, you. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> I've, I've got one for you, Shri. Um, <clears throat> you mentioned LinkedIn uh, at the start um, and how we're, we're all not properly uh, using it. Um, I, I totally agree with you. Um, and I'd be curious to hear a little bit of your insights into how um, everyone here on the call, as well as companies, can better leverage LinkedIn moving forward. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So I'm just going to show you my slides from LinkedIn so that you can grab this. Um, you can grab them one second. Let me just. Uh, so one of the things that I'm, I'm finding, as I'm sure many of you are, that everything we're going from different platform to different platform. None of these platforms are ideal. I don't think nobody has solved exactly how the, these should work. But let me just show you here. This is my LinkedIn slide. So you can grab these uh, right now. And uh, uh, you, you have uh, right there, you can grab this or you just go to Sri LinkedIn 2019. And you can see, I, they, I say here, I'm the world's second biggest fan of LinkedIn. Uh, you, you'll have to guess who the world's number one fan of LinkedIn is. If anybody wants to take a guess, uh, it is Satya Nadella, who is like me, an Indian American. So I'm not even the number one Indian American fan of LinkedIn because Satya, who owns Microsoft, paid $26 billion for LinkedIn. And uh, uh, even, even all of us can think about how we could use this better. So you can grab my slides. I would say quickly that what we're thinking of, you know, we, we think of social media as a way to show off our lives. Instagram's for showing off our lives. I want everyone to think of Twitter and LinkedIn as showing off our expertise. And how do you connect? How do you uh, go in there? I do this, this is slides from a, uh, you know, it can be a one and a half hours to two hour or even longer. Uh, discussion about LinkedIn and optimizing it at the highest level of your organization. So you you have the slides, you can have them. If any of you want to ever talk about LinkedIn or do a presentation for your team, I'd be happy to. We're leaving money on the table, folks, because we're not using LinkedIn properly. Even when you, there's a slide here that shows you, uh, let me just go in here. Um, this, is, this is the largest, this is now slightly out of date, but uh, directionally correct that you see all of these top networks in the world. And uh, uh, Twitter, look at where Twitter is, 300 million. 
It's at the bottom of this list and it makes the most noise because the president of the United States is on there, celebrity sports stars. That's why. Where is, I always ask, where is LinkedIn on this list? And you might be, some of you will know that it's right there. Look at where it is. Look how much more opportunity that is. But it is, LinkedIn itself has problems because they haven't taught people how to be relevant. Uh, and it's getting better all the time. And this COVID-19 has shown us the value of it. But I encourage you to play with it, try it. Uh, and LinkedIn itself has work to do to get even better uh, than where it is today. So again, here are the slides. You can grab all of them here. Um, uh, bit.ly slash 3 link 2019 or grab the QR code. And again, I just want to say for anybody who came in late that if this was uh, if this was an American only audience and I started talking about QR codes, eyes would be glazing over for many Americans, not obviously Neil and Chris and others, but a lot of them just don't use QR codes just the way they don't use WhatsApp, the way they should in the cultural sector internationally, of course, but most Americans don't. Three. That's all Super, I think you. of the time we have in terms of uh, attention being a scarce resource. I know you're very busy. Thank you so much. This was really, really great. I see some amazing feedback also in the chat. Personally, I loved it. Thank you. What a great way to start our partnership. Uh, thank you very much for uh, finding the time to join us. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm always happy to help. Please email me, Sri at Sri.net, if I can ever be of service. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sri. All the best. OK, one second. Let's do, take a picture, if we can. Uh, we, we, we talked about, so we're going to do, I, I love doing selfies at all my conferences, and we can't do that now. So we're going to take this here. Everybody who wants to look up, uh, please do. Ready? One, two, three. Uh, ready? Center. And there we go. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye -bye. You got it. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Bye-bye.